When you eat some real fatty foods, like say some delicious french fries, they make their way through the stomach and into the small intestine. At this point, they aren't really french fries anymore, but since they're high in fat, they're still a little more difficult to absorb. And that's where your gallbladder comes in. This high fat food stimulates the gallbladder to squeeze out some bile into the small intestine. That bile emulsifies the fat, or basically mixes it up and makes it easier to absorb. This is pretty much your gallbladder's job, store and concentrate bile until the time comes to send it to the small intestine. It's not the most glamorous of jobs, but hey, gotta start somewhere. If we take a closer look at this magical substance, we'd get a rough breakdown that's something like the following. 70% bile salts and acids, 10% cholesterol, 5% phospholipids, 5% proteins, and 1% conjugated bilirubin. And the rest are small amounts of other things like water, electrolytes, and bicarbonate. Bile salts and acids are mostly a product of cholesterol metabolism. So an acid might look something like this. And its salt is the anionic form, something like this. These acids and their salts have both hydrophobic and hydrophilic sides, making them amphiphilic, which help them make cholesterol and fat in the gut more soluble in bile. The phospholipids are mostly lysothin, also amphiphilic, and also help make cholesterol and fats more soluble in bile. Now gallstones are these round and solid stones you can find inside your gallbladder, and they're made from the components of bile, and so they're categorized depending on what they're made of. The most common ones are cholesterol stones, but there's also bilirubin stones, which are sometimes called pigmented stones. The first type, as you might guess, are made mostly of cholesterol that is precipitated out of the bile as a solid and formed these solid stones. These account for about 75 to 90% of cases of gallstones. This precipitation of cholesterol can happen in a couple of ways. First, the bile can become super saturated with cholesterol, meaning that the bile has so much cholesterol that the bile salts and acids, or phospholipids, can't hold any more in solution. Because remember that these all help make cholesterol more soluble in bile. And so the cholesterol comes out of solution as a solid, or precipitates. Another, somewhat similar way, is if you don't have enough of these bile acids or salts and phospholipids to help keep the cholesterol in solution. So the less you have, the less cholesterol can be in solution, and the more precipitates out. Gallbladder stasis, or inactivity, has also been linked to forming stones. If the bile just sits there, it can cause the cholesterol to separate and basically precipitate out as a solid. Kind of like when the oil in your peanut butter jar separates from the peanuts if it sits too long. Stones made of cholesterol can't be seen on x-ray. But rarely are the stones only cholesterol, and usually you'll see a bit of a mixed composition. If they have enough calcium carbonate, they might be able to be seen on x-ray. Remember that we said that there's a small amount of electrolytes and bicarbonate? Well, some of these electrolytes are calcium ions, and calcium ions tend to form insoluble precipitates with bicarbonate as calcium carbonate, which would be radio-opaque and visible on x-ray. But usually there's not enough calcium carbonate, and the cholesterol stones will be radiolucent on x-ray, and you won't be able to see them. Alright, so the other type of stone is a bilirubin, or pigmented gallstone. These ones again are pretty self-explanatory, and are made mostly of bilirubin, and therefore are pigmented. These are made when there's too much bilirubin in the bile, and it's combined with calcium to form the solid precipitate calcium bilirubinate. Since they're made partly of calcium, they'll usually be radio-opaque, meaning that you can see them on x-ray. Here's an example showing pigmented gallstones on an x-ray. Since it's the bilirubin in the bile, we'd maybe assume that they're made of conjugated bilirubin, right? Well, actually, pigmented gallstones are made of unconjugated bilirubin. What? I thought there was only conjugated bilirubin in bile. Well, the vast majority is conjugated but there's a small amount of unconjugated bilirubin in bile as well, only about 1-2% to of the total bilirubin, which is only 1% of bile. Although the exact mechanism is unclear, this tiny tiny amount of unconjugated bilirubin is thought to form from non-bacterial and non-enzymatic hydrolysis of conjugated bilirubin. So through a reaction in the chemical environment of bile that doesn't involve enzymes or bacteria, Okay, a quick breakdown of the structure of conjugated 
versus unconjugated bilirubin. The conjugated form has this R group, glucuronic acid, that makes it water soluble. Unconjugated just has this OH group, which at the pH of bile is in an anionic form that probably really like to bind with calcium. Usually though, bile salts bind up with the calcium ions and keep them from binding with and precipitating unconjugated bilirubin. With extravascular hemolysis, we have these macrophages eating up red blood cells more than normal and unconjugated bilirubin production is ramped up, right? Which is conjugated by the liver and sent to the gallbladder. In these situations where there's a lot of hemolysis and unconjugated bilirubin production, there's going to eventually be more conjugated bilirubin produced, right? And it's thought that when there's more conjugated bilirubin in the bile, there's also going to be more unconjugated bilirubin to the point where it can now bind to calcium instead of these bile salts and precipitate out to form black pigmented stones. If the gallstone is brown pigmented though, it's often a sign of gallbladder or biliary tract infection, and often the stones have even ventured outside the gallbladder and into the bile ducts. These brown gallstones are also made out of the calcium salts of unconjugated bilirubin, What's different about these, though, is how the unconjugated bilirubin forms. What happens is that a bacteria that causes a gallbladder infection, like E. coli, for example, brings about hydrolytic enzymes that can hydrolyze both conjugated bilirubin and phospholipids. These hydrolyzed forms can combine with the calcium ions, which then precipitate out to form these stones. This brownness is due to this mix of unconjugated bilirubin and phospholipids. Some other gallbladder infections are Ascaris lumbricoides and Clonorchis sinensis, the second of which is endemic to China, Korea, and Vietnam, so brown pigmented stones are more commonly seen in Asian populations. Also, women are typically more at risk than men, because estrogen increases cholesterol stone formation, which is also why the use of oral contraceptive pills that contain estrogen increase the risk of cholesterol stones. Also though, obesity is often associated with increased levels of cholesterol, right? Meaning that it's also associated with increased risk of cholesterol stones. Finally, rapid weight loss that decreases lipids can create an imbalance in bile composition that increases the chances of gallstone formation.